What's up, everybody? Back after another week of market mayhem. So, if you were watching, the NASDAQ is finally slowing down that turbocharged engine Elon put in it. The tech sector is finally, let's say, pulling back to readjust for the massive amount of money people, probably stupid traders like me, threw at it just to make quick gains. But with the pullback, we see also a lot of the money getting removed from those stocks being reinvested into S&P 500 and Dow Industrial Stocks, and those actually had a good week this week. Champion the buy bank earnings. It was really a tale of two takes. The investment banks are outperforming the commercial banks, and that tells us a couple things. That when you deal with such open population like a commercial bank, great instability will really affect you like COVID. While these investment banks like the Goldman Sachs and the Morgans who crush their earnings, they only deal with a niche selection of people. This allows them to be more focused, less susceptible to crazy swings because let's be real, they dealing with people who got the deepest pockets. They hold their breath before they go into meetings. Those pockets are deep. Goldman Sachs won't talk to you unless you got those gold sacks, man. It is crazy. I feel like the earnings and the take of the two different banking sections kind of reflect the reality of the stock market versus the economy. The stock market is doing fine. The investment banks, those big boys are doing fine. If you looked at the stock market, you wouldn't think we just went through a mass worldwide pandemic. But then you look at the commercial banks, the people who deal with the individuals, and they're struggling which more reflects the economy where a lot of people still haven't returned to work to make money. So maybe long-term with these cheap prices, you should dive into these commercial banks because they will come back if they're great quality brands. Like Citi, JP Morgan Chase are not going anywhere. I personally am long on the investment banks. I sometimes trade their names when I know or earnings or something that could quickly boost the stock price. But I'm sticking with them long term and I mostly invest in shares in Goldman and Morgan Stanley. I look at Morgan Stanley and Goldman as the Lannisters of this fucked up Game of Thrones world. They always got it. They pay their debts. They're kind of squealy. They're short. Honestly, I think Tyrion Lannister was really just based off of a Goldman Sachs employee. I feel like Goldman and Morgan Stanley are the type of banks that assault you. Like, yeah, man, I thought it would be a great idea to make my own home theater in the basement. What the fuck, Jerry? Are you kidding me? What makes you think you have home theater money? Why don't you, what, why don't you, why don't you come to me, huh? Huh? I would have told your stupid ass. Shut the fuck up. I'm trying to make a home theater. You don't know how to build, Larry. The fuck, you're going to get tools you don't know how to use? Put up, what, you're going to die in that theater, Larry. So another funny, wacky story. Apple avoids $15 billion in taxes owed to Ireland. So Apple had plans to make some factory or facility or some whatever in Ireland. But they pulled out of that agreement last second. And Ireland, drunk ass, thought they could tax them to fund the police, protect them from Conor McGregor's shenanigans. But Apple said, psych, bitch and proved in court to the European Union, the EU, that they actually were given no tax exemptions to build that plot of land. So that because they had no benefits or contracted agreements, they didn't have to owe that tax money to the country. And this just reminds me of how lucky it must be to be a trillion dollar company. You could just pull out of agreements last second and win. You can't get out of a contract with wedding caterers. But Apple just got out of a contract with fucking Ireland. And, okay, sure. Ireland might have been the only country that was dumb enough to lose that settlement. But it's not their fault. They have to drink proper number 12 all the time or else they're going to get hit. It's hard to function at work when you're drunk and scared. Either the electric company is going to knock out your lights or McGregor is. It's just fascinating that rules are really determined by the top. And 
That's why I feel like capitalism is something super powerful where as long as you maximize your potential and create something so valuable, you have footing against almost everyone. And a lot of times it feels like we have no footing against the government. <sighs> so for one of my L's last week, I slightly, not a lot, but slightly bought in to the Netflix hype. And everything about that trade last second said, don't do this, don't do this, sell this option, you don't need to do this. But I'm sick and tired of losing. I missed out on the Tesla jump. I missed out on the Amazon jump. I'm like, God damn it, I'm gonna get someone's motherfucking money. I'm taking somebody's money. And that's what I try to do to Netflix. And in turn, they kamikaze pilot. They're like, fuck you, I'm going out with my money the way I came in with my money, reckless. The stock plummeted about 10% literally in seconds after the market closed and they released their earnings. And they did some good things, beat earnings and beat numbers in some aspects and expectations analysts had. But the biggest number was future subscribers for next quarter. And they predicted about half of what market analysts were hoping for. And that was a no-no. So everyone took their money, the stock crashed, but long-term they will shoot higher. I just trade like a fool. And I was just trying to capitalize on the moment and you learn in this market, greed will turn you to a pig and pigs are out in the dirt and you're gonna be out in the dirt soon if you keep trading like that. But the only good thing about the stock plummeting is that now they have an adjusted pullback now I feel like the stock has accounted for the downside and has reduced its inflated fee so much that it might be good to start buying one, two shares and seeing how you like it. So it's now is an okay time to get into Netflix. If you're waiting for a pullback, I understand it's still up 60% for the year, but I doubt it's going to go down much lower than after that L of a earnings. I love it because we are seeing corporate beef play up in the streets. And I love this hood shit. Just because you're in a suit and tie does not mean you're not with it. And what we're seeing now is the battle between food delivery companies. Uber bought Postmates, great deal. But DoorDash came around and partnered with Walgreens to hit them back. And I love each side's play. Uber bought a well-loved delivery service, Postmates that have large return customer rates, and DoorDash opened its atmosphere from just food to small essentials as well. And that's why the deal with Walgreens is so great because it's not like a grocery store where that's a whole nother element of food delivery and a whole nother stratosphere. Instead, it's small things like you get a can of Arizona, you can get a two liter of Sprite, some cough syrup, and now you're just lit. That's what DoorDash is doing. It's opening up its delivery service of such small, inconvenient items that people really don't want to have to leave their house for. Like, you really don't want to have to leave your house for chapstick and batteries. And now, DoorDash is like, hey, my nigga, I got you. I'm going to get you lighters too. And some eye drops. Because I can already tell you need that chapstick and batteries for all that shit you about to talk on Xbox. and can't play xbox without being faded i think ezekiel elliott taught us that you gotta be faded on the box all right we're about to talk about playing with fire so tesla's earnings come out next week and after netflix i'm not gonna lie i'm not that ballsy right now i've been talking with my head down this whole episode i don't want to make eye contact with no one after that out and Tesla is a possibility of another home run hit or you're losing the whole series on this swing. I can't even tell you the percentage of which Tesla stock is up for the year, but it's doing phenomenal. And that raises the question, how much good news is needed to push them already past record heights? There's a lot more for them to lose on this earning call than for them to win. But the tricky thing is, if they do just enough to win, you're hitting that ball 400 feet, dude. That ball is gone. It's over the fences. It's in the stadium. It's in space. Like Elon's Tesla. So my recommendation 
it's on a Wednesday, so you still have some time after the back end of that option if you do a short one week option to maybe recoup some money if it goes down. I would trade shares. I feel like if that loses on a shares aspect, your loss in money is only going to be so much compared to the option where my option for Netflix, I bought it at $1,800. I woke up, it was $100 and it spit in my eye. At the end of the day, I'm still long on investments in Elon's companies and anything he does because he's a visionary. He's a dreamer. He's got to control all the robots. And I've seen iRobot. Robots don't like black people. So, I mean, I got to make enough friends while I can or else it's going to get ugly. So, always remember, if you're ever in between on what to do in the market, take the money and run. Peace.